Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to the 400 Mini Show, an exploration of the built-in games on the 400 Mini retro gaming console, and onwards into the broader Atari 8-bit library. Today's game from the built-in lineup is Crystal Castles, an adaptation of the 1983 arcade game by Atari. This was a rather late release on Atari 8-bit, not making it out to market until 1988, though much of the work was done on it around 1984 by programmers Paul Metz and William Junk. As Atari enthusiasts will know, however, 84 was a somewhat turbulent time for Atari due to the arrival of Jack Trammell on the scene, so it's unsurprising that some games developed around that time ended up in development hell. Trammell's enduring legacy is that he completely overhauled Atari's business at the time, putting a significant number of gaming-related projects on hold, leading to, among other things, the significant delay of the Atari 7800 console. Crystal Castles was originally developed by Franz Lanzinger, Lanzinger had been recommended to Atari by his friend Brian McGee, who had joined the company as a tester. In appreciation for this, Lanzinger incorporated McGee's initials BBM into a level of Crystal Castles. Lanzinger's first project at Atari was originally intended to be a variation on the company's classic asteroids, known as Toporoids. While he was stuck without a development system during his first month at the company, he spent his time making three-dimensional backgrounds on a mainframe computer. These were originally intended to be backgrounds for the Toporoids game, but as he experimented with adding characters that could move along the architecture, he realised that he could make a very different sort of game. Lanzinger supposedly spent $2,000 as a tax write-off playing arcade games as research during the development of Crystal Castles. He claimed that this helped him make good decisions about game design. Observing players enjoying titles such as Atari's Tempest also inspired him to include the level-skipping warps in Crystal Castles, some of the first ever examples of such a mechanic in games, and predating their more famous appearance in 1985 Super Mario Bros. by two years. Crystal Castles is noteworthy for being one of the first arcade games to have an actual ending, rather than simply cycling around its levels perpetually, getting harder and harder until it's literally impossible. Lanziger felt particularly strongly about this. He wrote a detailed two-page memo to Atari's management outlining his philosophy that if video games were aspiring to tell stories, they should have satisfying conclusions in the same way novels do. Of course, reaching that ending is a challenge. There's 37 stages standing between the player and the victory screen. I can't promise how many of those levels we're going to get through today, but let's go play Crystal Castles. Okay, welcome back to the 400 Mini, where today we're taking a look at Crystal Castles. In this enchanting maze game, you guide Bentley Bear through the evil witch Bethilda's home, collecting gems and outwitting magical enemies. Collect gems and jump over enemies, magic hat grants invincibility, pots of honey increase speed, defeat gem eaters while they're eating gems, explore 37 castles with one or two players. Let's just check the controls briefly. So it's just um, directions and fire button to jump. And that is it, I believe. So. Let's play. I remember <clears throat> I remember playing this back when it must have been the, it must have been a pirate copy of the prototype version we had. Um because it was certainly pre-1988 that I played this on Atari 8-bit. So it must have been one of those numerous examples where the prototype found its way out into the wild via piracy groups. Um, being distributed on bulletin boards or whatever. And, uh, yeah, that's what happened. Okay, let's begin. Press start. Here we go. Get the gems, Bentley Bear. So, this is a, a remarkably good port in a lot of ways. Um... It uses joystick control rather than trackball control, which the original arcade version did. But it keeps the, the quasi 3D graphics. It keeps the different types of enemies. It's got similar sound effects. It's got the same use of music. Bits of uh, Tchaikovsky's The Nutcracker Suite and uh, a few other classical classics along the way. And yeah, as you can see, it's got a a fairly slick and quick 3D drawing routine for the each level. And we've got things like 
the ability to defeat the gem eaters by running through them while they are eating a gem. Just like in the arcade original. Let's see if we can do that here as well. Oh, you can't do it while you're wearing the hat. But yeah, the, the pace of the game has been slowed down a little since the arcade original as well. I don't know if that was deliberate um, to make up for the fact that you can't move around quite as quickly with the joystick as you can with the trackball. Uh, or if that was just a natural consequence of, of the porting process. But yeah, the, the, the pace of this version is slower than the arcade game, which is quite welcome, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Right, so on this stage we've got gem eaters. Oh, you, you can't start a directional jump from a standing start in this version. You've got to be moving first. There's Berthilda in the corner. She's standing on top of the magic hat. Let's jump over here, grab the hat, and destroy Berthilda for some bonus points. Yeah, as you can see, there's, there's a couple of little things that aren't quite right. Like you see, if we go down behind here, Bentley still is drawn in front of stuff. Which isn't quite correct. But he can go inside that doorway. And he's hidden correctly when he does that. Get the honey. Let's get those gems there. There we go. Lovely big bonus for getting the last gem. If you're not familiar with Crystal Castles, you get a bonus if you are the one who eats the last gem on a stage. Uh, but if the if one of the enemies eats the last gem, then you get no bonus. Whoops. Oh no. Oh no! Bees! Covered in bees! I'm covered in bees! Alright, let's try and. Oh no! Get out of my way, tree! I... Oh no! It's all over! Game over! Press the trigger to restart! Now I believe. This version is lacking the high score table of the arcade original. The arcade original had a high score table with about a hundred entries in it. So in this version you've got just just a high score. Which is fine for home use. You'll also notice that the, the first level lacks the 3D rendering of the high score holders initials because this version doesn't store your initials. Which is a shame. That probably also means that um, Brian McGee's BBM initials are not incorporated in this version as well. Although they might be. I don't know. I can't remember ever having seen them. But it's also a while since I played this version, so... Yeah, so Bentley can go behind the structure there. And he goes all wireframe when you do that. But there's... When it's sort of like a, a half height thing that he's going behind, he doesn't get hidden properly. Get all the gems around Mr. Skellington. There we go. Bertilda. Eat your gem, please, so I can kill you. There we go. There we 
Okay, now we're free of enemies apart from those bees. Get out of here, bees. Go away, please. Go away. Thank you. <laughs> if you get the honey, it doesn't it doesn't stop the bees coming all together if you take too long over a level, but it, I think it does make them a little bit less likely to show up. But yeah, this is this is a, a, a remarkably good port of the arcade game. It's just a shame that it came out so late. The actual release version of this, it came out as as one of the as a a release. Oops. It came out as a cartridge for the XE game system, as it was known, which was a version of the 65 XE that had a detachable keyboard and was sort of positioned as a games console. Kind of to the disgust of a lot of Atari enthusiasts at the time, because there was kind of the feeling that Atari computers could be used for things other than games. And I know certainly... Certainly Les Ellingham, the editor of Page Six magazine, which I've, I've mentioned numerous times on this channel because of my family's involvement with that magazine. I know Les found it enormously frustrating when he had spent literally years at that point publishing a magazine showing you that you could do far more with an Atari 8-bit computer than just play games on it. And then here was Atari of the time, which was very different from Atari of when the 8-bit range of computers launched. Here was Atari at the time specifically marketing them as games machines. And that in turn caused the high street shops to market them as games machines while their contemporaries the commodore 64 and the spectrum were correctly being marketed as home computers and you know that was frustrating for a lot of atari enthusiasts who like to make a point of of um of showing how they used their computer for all manner of different things. And this even continued after the ST came on the scene and did a lot of sort of productivity things better than the 8-bit did. There were still a lot of people who couldn't justify the expense of upgrading to an ST and so became almost militant about their use of their Atari 8-bit as a machine for productivity and creativity and learning how to program your own stuff. Because there was a very marked shift in culture between the 8-bit and 16-bit home computer eras. The 8-bit home computer era, it was very much assumed that pretty much everyone who picked up a computer would try their hand at programming at some point. Because they came with the built-in programming language. They came with basic built-in. Whereas once the 16-bit era rolled around and computers no longer had a built-in programming language, you had to boot it from a floppy disk. The sort of culture surrounding computing changed quite a bit. There were still... Oops. There were still people who used computers for productivity and serious applications and creativity and that sort of thing. Um, but it was, a, it was a very different kind of atmosphere to the 8-bit era. And yes, there were people who did pick up a home computer at the time just to play games on it. If you look at the, the popular bundles of the ST and the Amiga in the late 1980s in particular, most of them were very focused around games. So 
so for the ST you had things like the Power Pack and the Super Pack. On the Amiga you had the Batman Pack and the Cartoon Classics Pack and all that sort of thing. All of them themed around games. So yeah, it was it was interesting. It was interesting, and and to tie this back to Crystal Castles, this th this eventually saw release around the time that Atari was specifically marketing its computers as games machines. Move, Mr. Skeleton. You're in my way. Oops! Too close. I thought I could get round him, but apparently not. But yeah, if, if this had come out in 1984, I think this would have been pretty roundly praised by everyone. Because it's, it's a very good port of what would have been, at the time, a relatively recent arcade game. Whereas in 1988, that was a long time after the arcade game had been released in in tech terms. And if you compare this to what, for example, NES players were playing in 1988, it's no comparison. No comparison. Atari consoles, be they the 2600, the 5200, the 7800, or the XE game system, were always great at arcade-style games. Whoops. Always great at arcade-style games and arcade ports, like we've got here. But by the late 80s, that wasn't necessarily what people wanted. We were starting to see more complex games that could only be done on a home computer that wouldn't be practical to play on an arcade machine. Things like war games, strategy games, management games, role-playing games. And so yeah, this, this would have looked a bit dated by the time it actually got released. Which is a shame. Because like, like I say, it's, it's a good port. There's nothing wrong with it. It plays well. It's been paced nicely so that it... Paced and rebalanced nicely so that it, it makes up for the... The lack of trackball control that the arcade machine had. And it's very playable. It's presented well. Looks good, nice and colourful, good music. Got all the authentic enemies, bit of flicker going on. Which is not at all unusual when, you're, when you've got a lot of sprites going. Come down here so I can kill you. Come on, this way, this way. Stop dicking around in the corner, I want to destroy you. Oh, come on. I time that poorly. Come on, keep going. Keep going. No. Oh, sod it. Just leave him to it. Extra lives every 70,000 points, the level name says. You get 500 points for just picking up the magic hat. So that's good. And we get a nice big bonus because we will get the last gem now because that idiot is stuck down there in the corner. Like a fool. Oh no, he's coming up. He's coming up. He's too late though. Alright, this is where it all went wrong last time, isn't it? Oh no! It's all gone wrong again! <laughs> With poor timing. 
That's upsetting. Right, let's have one more go. Yeah, so if you're unfamiliar with the arcade game, those sort of big square roofs... Actually, I'll tell you what we'll try. We'll see if we can do the warp. We can. There we go. So that jumps us straight to level three. Which is nice. And death. Very good. Yeah, so the, the, the level warp, if you didn't see what I did, involves going around the back on that first stage into the back corner and jumping. And if you do that, it will send you straight to level three, the third set of levels. And it will also give you a big score bonus, which you'll notice gives you a couple of extra lives as well. Which I don't think it did on the arcade version. It was an easy way to get a high score in the arcade version, though. Because suddenly being awarded 100,000 points for doing nothing more than jumping in the corner of the first level. <laughs> Nasty tree, level three. Well, that is a nasty tree. He's moving very quickly. Damn. Timed it wrong again. Let's just clear out this bottom area as well as we can. And then just stay away from the baddies. Stay away from them. But yeah, well, what I was going to say before is that um, on the first stage, um, normally what happens is the roof of the building is kind of carved out to say the the initials of whoever's got the high score, which by default is Franz Landinger. So it says FXL by default for Franz X Lenzinger. But if you get the high score, which is a simple matter of just doing the warp um, with the default settings, then you can put your initials there, which is very nice. Hidden Spiral. Now, just to give you an idea of this being easier than the arcade original, I've never seen this level before. Oh, we do have someone's initials. We do have someone's initials carved in there at the bottom, don't we? NIA. Or NIA. But I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever seen that ghost enemy before. Okay. Bethilda's dungeon. Nicely done. Let's do with Bethilda with the magic hat. Some free bonus points. But yeah, officially further than I've ever been in Crystal Castle now. Because I don't think I knew about the warp when I was a kid. Um, and I can't get this far in the arcade version. 
Actually, getting quite close to getting the extra life as well, aren't we? We'll just need to go and get that last one without dying preferably. There we go. Pyramid, level four. Oh no! Benny actually says something different with every life on the arcade original. Go away, tree. Oh dear. It's all it's all done. Yeah, but ben Benny actually says something different with each different life on the arcade original, but it's not in this one apparently. Anyway, there we are. That is Crystal Castles for Atari 8 bit. Yeah, a, a good port that. Um like I say, I, I played the it must have been the prototype back in the day, because we, we had it well before nineteen eighty eight. Um and that's the version that got released on the on the XC game system. So I believe it had a few tweaks from that prototype version that I would have played. But it was based on based on the same code, I think. So yeah, a decent game. A decent game, certainly. So, we'll leave that there for today. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.